Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The opening ceremony of the Taiwan International Conference on Ocean Governance 2023 will begin in two minutes. So please take your seat at your earliest convenience. Thank you. 各位女士，各位先生，我们今天的活动的开幕式预计在两分钟就即将开始，请您尽速入座，谢谢。若如有不清楚的地方，也麻烦请协助啊，来问一下现场的服务人员，谢谢。各位女士，各位先生，大家早安！欢迎莅临二零二三台湾海洋治理国际研讨会。Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Taiwan International Conference on Ocean Governance 2023. 我是今天研讨会的司仪江惠颂，很高兴有机会为大家服务。My name is Marian Zhang, and I am your master ceremony today. 为了扣合国家海洋政策白皮书的施政目标，海洋委员会与国家发展委员会、美国在台协会高雄分处联合举办了今天的这场探讨台湾海洋治理的国际研讨会。我们希望唤醒大家对海洋事务的重视，一起努力建构生态、安全、繁荣的永续海洋的国家。Thank you for joining us today. The conference is co-hosted by National Development Council, American Institute in Taiwan, Kaohsiung Branch, and the Ocean Affairs Council that seeks to achieve the objectives outlined in the National Ocean Policy White Paper that is aimed to construct, with everybody's effort, a nation of ecological sustainability, maritime security, and industrial prosperity. 今天我们很荣幸有好几位贵宾。百忙当中抽空前来参加今天的活动，请容我为大家一一介绍。We're so delighted to have some honorable guests joining us today. 
Please allow me to introduce them. 首先，请欢迎海洋委员会洪文玲副主任委员。Please welcome Wenling Hong, Deputy Minister, Ocean Affairs Council. 接着，请欢迎美国在台协会高雄分处黄东伟处长。Please welcome Thomas Wong, Branch Chief, AIT 高雄 Branch. 接着，请欢迎国立高雄科技大学李嘉宏副校长。Please welcome Dr. Jia Hongling, Deputy President, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. 接着，请欢迎我们今天专题演讲的演讲者，来自美国国家海洋暨大气总署资深科学家。Please welcome Dr. V. J. Talapakarda, Senior Scientist from NOAA, National Oceanic. And a Miss Frederick administration. 接着，请欢迎台湾国际法学会林廷辉副秘书长。Please welcome Dr. Ting Hui Lin, Deputy Secretary General, Taiwan Society for International Law. 接着，请欢迎行政院南部联合服务中心徐乃文副执行长。Please welcome Mr. Nai Wen Xu, Deputy CEO, Southern Taiwan Joint Service Center, Executive Yuan. 接着，请欢迎外交部南部办事处沈振中处长。Please also welcome、uh, Ambassador Chen Zhongshan, Director General, Southern Taiwan Office, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. 接着，请欢迎国立高雄科技大学水圈学院董振立院长。Please welcome Dr. Deng Didong, Dean of the College of the High Perspective Science, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. 接着，请欢迎国立高雄科技大学海洋生物学院何黎明副院长。Please also welcome Dr. Li Minghao, Deputy Dean of the College of Marine Com Commerce, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. 我们还有几位贵宾呢，现在还在路上。他们待会到的时候，我们会再来一一为大家为大家介绍。当然，也因为时间的关系，我没有办法介绍所有的来宾。This is the time that I am not able to introduce all of you.、Uh, but please, could you give yourself a round of applause to、uh, a warm welcome to join our event today? 请大家给自己一个掌声。我们很高兴大家一起来参加这场国际的研讨会。今天啊，我们很高兴。邀请到两个团体，运用海洋保护的概念，要来为我们带来非常有意义的开场表演。We are very delighted to have two performing groups who adopt the concept of ocean protection to kick off our event today. 首先，我们要登场的是来自澎湖丰贵国小。The first group is from Fengui Elementary School, Pengu. These two cute little children have creative ideas. 自行制作海废服装表演，让我们来看看他们想要传达什么样的讯息。These two students are very creative. They use the marine debris to make clothes. Let's see what message they would like to deliver. Please welcome. 请掌声欢迎澎湖丰贵国小小朋友的表演。一直困扰着我们的家乡澎湖。我们不要美丽的家乡被海洋废弃物淹没，变成海废垃圾岛。请管妈想办法帮帮我们。Very precise performance. <laughs> 掌声，谢谢澎湖丰贵国小的表演。大家刚刚他们听到他们的讯息了吗？很清楚哈。澎湖事实上是一个很美丽的海岛，不可以让美丽的澎湖被海洋的废弃物淹没了。我相信这是丰贵国小小朋友刚才的声音，我们应该都已经听到了。Pengui is a beautiful island and attracting so many tourists. Uh, to visit during summer vacation and holiday seasons, so we definitely won't allow it to be covered with the marine debris. And I believe that we have well received the messages delivered by these two very lovely young kids, very talented students. So, ah, we are very grateful for them. They have very precise, 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 very precise
又非常精短、非常精彩的表演。好，接下来这场表演呢，是特别呼应。海委会所推动的《海污法修法》，也就是《海洋污染防治法》的修正案，已于五月十二号经过立法院院会三读通过了。海洋污染让它不恶化，要遏制，这是这次修法的目的。The next performance is especially to echo the recent law amendment of Marine Pollution Control Act, which was approved by the Legislative Yuan on the twelfth of May. The main purpose of this amendment is to ensure that the ocean pollution must be curbed. 让我们来欣赏一群由数德科技大学充满创意的学生，为了宣导海洋污染防治法所带来非常精彩的时装表演。Let's welcome the creative and talented students from Shu De University for their fashion show.
谢谢树的推大，带来这么震撼也非常精彩的服装表演哦，大家很能想象的这样子呃，充满创意的设计。我们要请我们的模特们是不是要在台上稍微留步一下？因为呢，我们发现呢，这是一个非常难得，而且是可以符合今天活动主题又这么有创意的活动表演，所以我们想要来来邀请几位贵宾上台来一起。我们来留下美丽的画面 ，because it is such a creative opening performance. We would like to first invite the performers from Shu the University, which you are seeing them、uh, on the stage, and to take group photos together with some of our special guests. So now I want to invite several guests to the stage to take photos with us. First, I want to invite the Hongwen Lin Chairman of the Hongwen Commission. 欢迎您上台，呃，我也要来邀请 A I T 高雄分处黄东伟处长，请您上台，一起跟我们跟呃我们的 performers 一起来合影留念。接着我们要来欢迎哈许志杰立委也到了现场，我们加油打气，我们也欢迎李志许志杰立委上台。接着我也要来邀请国立高雄科技大学李嘉宏副校长，以及澎湖丰贵国小林延林校长。还有我们树德科技大学这次团队的设计师肖颖老师也一起上台，跟我们一起来合影留念。好，我们先跟树科大的团队先合影哈。那我们待会再来邀请澎湖的呃澎湖的丰贵国小的小朋友们一起。So it's such a, a creative opening performance. So we would like to、uh, you know take group photographs and it's a beautiful memory. 好，我们先看前方的摄影朋友。好的，接着是说我们可以来比个赞。Could you please give a thumbs up? Great， 好的，谢谢。接着我要来邀请呢，澎湖丰贵国小的两位可爱的小朋友来，请您一起来加入我们的合影的行列。Please welcome the two talented students from 凤贵 Elementary School。好，我们来一起来合照。一样 ，Please look ahead， 请看前方，前方的媒体摄影朋友们。接着，我们是不是可以来比一个赞 ？Please give a thumbs up， 一个赞。好的，最后一个，我们来比一个超级大的爱心，大爱心，<笑>可以吗？在前排的弄小爱心，在后面的比大爱心哈。Right， right， three。Two, one, go! Big heart, big love for our ocean. 好的，谢谢您。Thank you very much. 好，谢谢。那我们请回座。Please take your seat, and then we are going to proceed the next section. 啊，也再次，我们是不是谢谢两组非常具有创意而且非常精彩的表演团体，来自于树德科技大学以及澎湖丰贵国小。精彩的开场表演，这些都是符合我们今天国际研讨会的主题哦。他们都是有重要的讯息，希望唤醒我们大家对海洋事物的重视。We are also very honored to have special guests with us, and I would like to invite some of them to say a few words on the stage. 接下来呢，我不要来邀请几位贵宾上台致辞。那么，首先我要来邀请的，就是美国在台协会高雄分处处长黄东伟黄处长。Please join me welcoming Thomas Wong, branch chief of AIT 高雄 branch office, to come up to the stage to say a few words for us. Welcome, Thomas. De Deputy Minister Hong, National Gaoshan University of Science and Te Technology Vice President Li,、uh, distinguished guests in the audience, good morning. On behalf of the American Institute in Taiwan, I would like to thank the Ocean Affairs Council for organizing today's international conference on ocean governance. For over four decades now, U.S.-Taiwan cooperation has grown stronger and more diverse. One of the keys to our successful partnership is our shared values, including respect for the rule of law, a 
a commitment to free and fair trade and support for civil liberties at home and around the world. Our shared values include our mutual desire to preserve our shared oceans for future generations by reducing harmful emissions and marine debris, creating innovative maritime-based economic models and new jobs, and strengthening maritime security, maritime protection. AIT has worked closely with the Ocean Affairs Council on these issues since it was founded in 2018. Despite the challenges posed by the global COVID pandemic, we have successfully brought together leading scientific experts from the United States, Taiwan, and elsewhere to participate in international forums like this one today. In addition to others, such as our global cooperation and training framework events on combating marine debris and promoting sustainable oceans based on the rule of law, the annual Ocean Challenge STEM competition and the Taiwan International Ocean Youth Leadership and Volunteer Camp. The challenges and issues that are being discussed here today are massive in scale and are extraordinarily complex. It will take sustained and coordinated efforts from the best and brightest around the world to tackle these problems. This is why international expert forums like this one are so important. The more we collaborate, the more we share new ideas and build more diverse networks, the better equipped we will be to make real progress protecting our oceans. AIT truly, truly appreciates your participation in today's conference. Thank you for your commitment to this shared challenge, and I am sure this conference will be a great success. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas. For such a beautiful messages. 那我们刚刚呢也来到了远道而来的贵宾，请容我在这边为大家介绍。嗯，是。Yeah, I would like to introduce. Uh, there are uh, some guests just arriving and to uh, join us today. Please welcome. Uh, Shen Wenxian, Gary Nading, Minister Councillor, Mr. Elroy Wilson from Saint Vincent and the Grenadines. 还有来自圣文森格瑞纳丁 Councillor Miss Shabby Ann Denny from Saint Vincent and Grenadines. 还有我们的呃立法委员许志杰也来到的现场，所以我现在也要来邀请许志伟、许许立伟上台，为我们说几句话。We are also very happy that legislator Zhijie Xu is with us today, so I'm going to invite him to come up to the stage to say a few words. Please welcome legislator Xu. Oh, 谢谢我们美丽的主持人。谢谢。这个不是要翻译吗<笑> ？Thank you for beautiful master ceremony <笑>。啊，我们的副主委啊，还有我们的黄处长啊，还有我们校长哈，还有副执行长啊，我们在座的所有的嘉宾哈，大家早安，大家好。Good morning, everyone, distinguished guests。好，现在其实永续发展是一个非常重要的观念。啊，那我们明年开始就是所有的碳权、碳交易啊，我们也希望说这个全世界都一起来努力的。We all know that sustainability is now becoming an importantly important concept, and uh, regarding uh the carbon trade and related subjects, are the efforts jointly made by the everyone of the world. 啊，所以保护地球。保护森林，保护海洋，都是我们非常重要的工作。So protection of the earth, the forest, the ocean becomes a very important task for us. 好，那台湾是海洋国家，高雄是海洋城市啊，也谢谢我们全球各界啊，对关心海洋的好朋友一起来到高雄。Taiwan is an Island and you know surrounding with the ocean. Kaohsiung is the ocean capital, so I'm grateful that everyone coming to my, the city to care about the maritime affairs. 好，我我们一起把海洋的治理，啊，包括经济，包括环保
，哦，需要努力的方向，哦，我也希望说，借由大家的宝贵意见，能够提供台湾啊，我们海洋委员会一个很好的啊一个方向，将来要施政的方向。The issues of the environmental protection and also the economic and environmental <coughs> and also the green energy etc. that is very important uh, subjects and we welcome the experience and the exchange uh, ideas exchange shared by all of you and then so that could be a base of our reference for our national policy making. Uh, 让我们保护地球啊，永续发展也可以成功啊！大家一起努力，谢谢大家，谢谢。Thank you for your participating. Let's work together to protect our ocean, our earth, and to aim on the ocean governance to make it a successful event. Thank you. 谢谢，谢谢许立伟。好，接下来呢，我要邀请上台致辞的是。Uh, now, please welcome Dr. Zhang Hong Li, the Deputy President of National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology, to come to the stage to say a few words. Uh, Deputy Director of Ocean Affairs Council, Hong Wenling, uh, Director of American Institute in Taiwan, Kaohsiung Branch, Thomas Huang, uh, our, uh, our lawmaker, Xu, Xu Zijie, and the uh, de <coughs> delegates uh, from the local governments and the central governments, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to our university and the participant in the conference. We are very honored to host the Taiwan International uh, Conference on Ocean Governance 2023. The conference provides the latest ocean-related information and uh, uh, future trends. It also serves as a platform of information exchange for researchers from academic institute, central and local governments, and public and the private sector, domestically and uh, internationally. Located in Kaohsiung City, the National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology is an important hub for the development, development of uh, distant water uh, fishery and uh, aquaculture, and, uh, uh, and the aquatic uh, product processing industries. Moreover, Kaohsiung Port and uh, Qianzhen are two important distribution centers for imported fishery products, and uh, there are many aquatic product processing factories as the only University of Science and Technology in South Taiwan uh, specializing in a maritime affair, not to mention the professional faculty team, training field, and research developments, the geographically, uh, geographical advantage enable us to cultivate maritime talents. As a university with com complete a marine science and technology departments, we aim to build a foundation for a high quality academic industry cooperation research within marine science and technology. We are also the only university in Taiwan that cultivates marine, a maritime professional and uh, the merger, after the merger of three universities, in 2018, our school is currently the largest te technical university in Taiwan. We have provided a variety of learning areas, programs, and uh, focusing on innovation and uh, connection with the industry. Hosting this conference 
is an excellent example of cooperation between university and uh, government agencies. Once again, I would like to appreciate your coming today and uh, hope the conference is successful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Li, the Deputy President of the National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. Thank you, Dr. Li. Now, next speaker is our event host. AIPK. Please welcome Minister Biling Guan of Ocean Affairs Council. AIPK Huang Dongwei Chuchang, Guoli Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology Yang Qingyu Chuchang, NOVA Senior Scientist Dr. VZ Terpurgada, Taiwan International Student Council Lin Tinghui副秘书长，在场各位贵宾、各位好朋友，大家早安，大家好。首先，我代表海洋委员会欢迎各位今天到场参加由本会、国发会及美国在台协会高雄分处国际合作。共同举办的二零二三台湾海洋治理国际研讨会，我要感谢国发会、美国在台协会高雄分处再次与海洋委员会携手合作，举办这一场国际研讨会。这次活动的举办，彰显了美国在台协会高雄分处与海洋委员会长期的合作伙伴关系，期待。台美在双方的合作之下，更进一步奠定更好的合作基础。今天在这里有来自各个国家的专家学者，包括台湾、美国、英国、澳洲、泰国、马来西亚、印度、越南、印尼、菲律宾及孟加拉等十余国、四十余位专家学者到场发表研究成果。各位都是在海洋教育、海洋科学研究、海洋保育、海域安全、海洋工程以及海洋产业领域上有国际声望，而且有非常丰富的海洋治理经验的专家。相信透过今天六大领域的英文论文成果发表及讨论交流，可以让大家进一步掌握海洋治理的最新发展趋势。所面临的挑战以及解决方案，我用三安四海来说明海洋委员会的业务。三安指的是国安、治安、平安；四海则包括海洋污染防治、海洋废弃物治理、海洋生态保育和海洋产业发展。这一次国际研讨会专题演讲主题设定在当前的南海情势以及台美海事合作。主要是针对三安的部分，我们将致力于维护区域的和平稳定。面对海洋霸权的挑战，我们坚定捍卫主权及国家安全。另外，我们也邀请了美国 NOAA 资深科学家到场进行专题演讲，期许未来台美海洋科技合作能够更上一层楼。刚才开幕表演活动。大家也看到，我们特别邀请了树德科技大学的同学们，运用创意设计了以宣导海洋污染防治为主题的时装表演。这一场开场表演，特别是为了呼应本会所推动的《海污法修法》。《海洋污染防治法》修正案已经在五月十二日经立法院院会三读通过，即将由总统来公告。海洋污染不恶化，要遏制。是这次修法的目的。修正后的海洋污染防治法赋予海委会直接与国际规范接轨的权利，是一个划时代的典范第一的修法。这个修法展现了我们保护海洋的决心。我们透过刚刚的表演，也都听到了澎湖丰贵国小小朋友的心声：海洋无国界。海漂垃圾也没有国界，我们需要和美国及亚太区域经济体一起合作，讨论海废区域治理合作架构，并付诸实行。我在这里要请我们团队的同仁做三件事。第一件是在今年七月去美国参加 APEC 海洋及渔业工作小组会议的时候。
，把我们澎湖小朋友的心声传递给 APEC 各经济体指导，呼吁他们和我们一起合作，建立海洋废弃物区域治理合作平台，进行海洋废弃物区域良善治理。第二。是邀请各经济体、各国官员、专家学者来台参加我们今年下半年办理的亚太经济合作海洋废弃物区域治理计划工作坊，和我们集思广益，一起讨论海洋废弃物技术解决方案、海洋废弃物社区解决方案以及海洋废弃物跨区域治理解决方案等议题。第三件。是强化我们与其他部会的合作，正面解决废弃物的问题，让海洋能够重新焕发生命力，重现它多彩多姿的样貌。我说过，为了下一代能有更好的生活，为了海洋要永续发展，我要向海废宣战。我同时也要邀请 APEC。海洋及渔业工作小组各经济体和我们一起努力，积极行动，进行海废区域治理。让我们一同向海废宣战，绝对不要让天真可爱的小朋友担忧，美丽的家乡会变成海废垃圾岛。因为这一段致辞的内容很重要，所以请容我以英语再说一遍。Because this paragraph is very important, please allow me to deliver again in English. We have heard the voice of the children from Fonggui Elementary School in Penghu. The ocean respects no boundaries, and neither does marine debris. We need to collaborate with the United States and economies in the Asia-Pacific region to discuss. The framework for regional cooperation on marine debris management, and put it into practice. I ask the Department of International Development at the Ocean Affairs Council to do three things here. First, when we attend the APEC Ocean and the Fisheries Working Group meeting in the United States this July, we will convey the message. From Penghu's kids to all the APEC economies, and invite them to work with us to establish a collaborative platform for marine debris management and promote sound action in the region. Second, in September this year, when organizing the APEC workshop on regional marine debris management. We will invite officials, experts, and scholars from APEC economies to work together on solutions to marine debris management, in terms of technology, community stewardship, and cross-regional governance. Third, we will amp up the teamwork with our fellow ministries and agencies to tackle the waste problem head-on. Together, we'll breathe new life into our beloved ocean, bringing back her dazzling and captivating beauty. As I have said before, I declare war on marine debris for the sake of our future generations and the sustainable development of our oceans. Meanwhile. I invite all the APEC economies from the Ocean and the Fisheries Working Group to work together with us and take active actions to manage marine debris on the regional level. Let us fight against the marine debris together, and never let Penghu's innocent and adorable children worry that. Their beautiful hometown will become an island of marine debris. 当然，我也要感谢国立高雄科技大学杨清玉校长，以及高科大团队的同仁们筹办本次国际研讨会活动的辛劳付出。最后，仅代表海洋委员会
。再次感谢各位对海洋治理的热心参与及贡献，祝福今天的国际研讨会顺利成功，大家收获满满，满载而归，身体健康，万事如意。谢谢大家，谢谢。谢谢管主委的致辞以及带来重要的讯息。Thank you. Uh, the messages from the Minister Guan very important, also very inspiring. There are a lot of actions we need to take. This is without any hesitation. Because this is a very difficult opportunity, and we have so many members of the public who are watching the audience come to the event. So we now need to take a little time to invite some members of the public to the event. We need to take a photo with them because it is such a treasured opportunity that. All of you who cares about so much the ocean governance gathering today and is very unusual, is very rare opportunity. I would like to treasure them. So I would like to invite some of the honorable guests to come up to the stage. Let's take a good photograph uh, to keep a beautiful memory. 那首先我要来一一来邀请，所以请您呃就是听到唱名的话，请您来上台哈。好 ，Now please. Now I would like to invite. Uh, 洪文林副主任委员，来自海洋委员会；文林洪 ，Deputy Minister Ocean Affairs Council； Thomas Wong, Branch Chief AIT 高雄 Branch， 美国在台协会高雄分处黄东伟处长；许志杰立委 ；The Legislator 直接徐；国立高雄科技大学李嘉宏副校长 ；Dr. Zhao Hong Li, Deputy President, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology。美国国家海洋暨大气总署资深科学家 Dr. r e J. t e l e p a r a g u a d a Senior Scientist from NOAA。台湾国际法学会林廷辉副秘书长 Dr. t i n g h u i l i n Deputy Secretary General Taiwan Society of International Law。也邀请行政院南部联合服务中心徐乃文副执行长。Mr. Nai Wen Shi, Deputy CEO, Southern Taiwan Joint Service Center, Executive Yuan. 外交部南部办事处沈振宗处长 ，Mr. Chen Tong Shen, Director General, Southern Taiwan Office, Ministry of Foreign Affairs。我们也欢迎国立高雄科技大学水泉学院董振地院长 ，Dr. Jen Di Dong, Dean of College of the Hydrosphere Science, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology。国立高雄科技大学海洋生物学院何黎明副院长。Please also welcome Dr. Li Minghao, Deputy Ocean College of Marine Commerce, National Kaohsiung University of Science Technology. Please also welcome and would like to invite the Mr. Counselor, Mr. Elroy Wilson from Saint Vincent and the Grenadine, and also a Counselor, Ms. Shabby Ann Dennis from Saint Vincent and the Grenadine. 我们也要欢迎国立高雄科技大学综合业务处杨敏雄处长。Please also welcome Dr. Ming Shong Yang, Director of General Affairs Division, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. 同时，我们要来邀请国立高雄科技大学海洋事务研究中心刘文宏主任 ，Dr. Wen Hong Liu, Director of the Marine Research Center, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology. 我们也要欢迎。国立高雄科技大学海洋事务与产业管理研究所高瑞忠所长 ，Dr. Ri Chong Gao, Dean of the Institute of the Marine Affairs and Business Management, National Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology。澎湖丰贵国小林延玲校长 ，Mrs. Carol Lin, Principal of Fenghui Elementary School from Penghu。国家海洋研究院翁建二主任秘书。Please also welcome Mr. Jiang Er Wong, Secretary General, National Academy of Marine Research. 我们也邀请海洋保育署宋新珍副署长。Please also welcome Xin Zhen Song, Deputy Director General, Ocean Conservation Administration, 以及海洋保育署吴龙进副署长。Jun Ling Wu, Director. Director General Ocean Conservation Administration. Okay, and also please welcome the Ambassador Oscar Odufo Padilla Lam from Republic of Guatemala. 请欢迎瓜地马拉共和国大使 Oscar Odufo Padilla Lam 也到了现场，欢迎他一起上台。Let's take a group photograph together. 
好，也请把您的口罩拿下来哈。那我们大概就是呃三个动作哈。第一个动作 ，We are going to take three actions. The first action, actually doing nothing. 你们只要视线往前看 ，Please look ahead with your big smile. Oh, okay. We have also our little toys. They would like you to carry for us. Yeah. Are we ready? Okay, right. Action one. Please look ahead. 请大家视线往前看 with your big smile. Okay, right. Next action two. Please give a thumbs up. 请贵宾比个赞，好吗？对我们的镜头微笑比赞。Right. Action three. 我们要来请贵宾比个爱心的手势。Please give a gesture of love. To the, our audience and to the ocean. Okay, these are the three actions facing audience. But we are going to try something different, right? Photographer, would you like to come up to the stage? That's right. And then I would like to ask the honorable guests on the stage, please turn around and look at me. I'm joking. Uh, look at our beautiful board because we are going to take a photo or some photos from the view of the stage and with the audience with us in the background. Right? Could we kind of step a little bit back? Ah, no, still. Want to sit on the seat? Really? Ah, you just did it. Okay, 好吧 right. This is slightly different from what we rehearsed yesterday, but it's okay. So, could we all return to your seat? Yeah, I think that probably would be more beautiful viewing. Yeah, sorry about this, right? So, could we、uh, return to your seat, and then we are going to take a photo. Okay, and then we need to have the、uh, sign boards to be placed. 请工作人员协助。来，让我们的贵宾坐在第一排的贵宾帮我们手持标语，好吗？好。那这次我们所有的嗯现场的来宾都可以啊一起入境啊，这是非常难得，而且我们都会铺在啊活动的官网以及粉丝专业。Wow, with a big heart. Right, take action together to protect our ocean. Right. This reminds me of the corporate slogan of a seafood trading company. There is a shaping ocean together. There is the joint efforts we all have to endure. 好，我们是不是大家视线往前方看？可以哈，你这是广角的哈。Alright, big smile. Three, two, one. Yeah. Alright, so right, would you like to give a thumb up again, everyone? Everyone. High up, right. Three, two, one. Yeah. <laughs> Is that okay? Now, okay. Great. Mission completed. Thank you very much. Thank you. 好的，谢谢。Now we have to and we must right immediately proceed the keynote speech section, which is we are all looking forward to. 啊，现在我们要马上来开始进行我们今天重要的专题演讲。让我要来邀请专题演讲的主持人，啊，国家海洋研究院翁建二博士上台来主持，欢迎翁博士。I will hand over my microphone to the host for the keynote speech, Dr. Jiana Huang from National Academy Academy of Marine Research. Please welcome Dr. Huang. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The first keynote speech topic is NOAA's unified forecasting system, advanced in ocean modeling and data assimilation in the context of Earth system and modeling for research and operation. It's my pleasure to introduce the today's speaker, Dr. Talapagata. Our speaker, Dr. Pagata is a senior scientist 
and the Environmental Modeling Center of the National Center for Environmental Petition in College Park, Maryland, since August 2022. Dr. Talapagata, with a rich background in meteorology and the extensive experience in the field, Dr. Talapagata has made remarkable contribution to the development and the implementation of an operational modeling system for weather forecasting. <coughs> Dr. Pragata's remarkable accomplishment had garnered recognition and accolade. He has been honored with the prestigious award such as NOAA National Weather Service Isaac Klein Award for Scientific Leadership. The United States Department of Commercial Gold Medal and the Robert John Stevenson Award for Tropical Meteorology. In 2022, he was at least as a fellow of the American Meteorological Service Society. Today, Dr. Talapagata will enlighten us a debatefitting topic related to his disability. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Dr. Talapagata as he takes the stage. Uh, Dr. Talapagata, please. Thank you. Good morning. It's a, it's a great honor to be here as a, a keynote speaker for the Taiwan International Conference on Ocean Governance of 2023. Thank you so much for inviting me and giving me a, an opportunity to, to be present here and open up a discussion on what we are facing in terms of challenges towards improving our understanding of our Earth system and uh, how to take advantage of that knowledge to improve our predictions that benefits to meet our organizational goals, to save the lives and property, to improve the economy, and uh, to, to, to develop the next generation scientists to advance our research and operational capabilities. So my name is Vijay Talla Pragada. Thank you so much for putting your effort Spell my name correctly. Many of you got it right. Thank you. Uh, I'm known as Vijay, so it's easy. Uh, I'm a senior scientist from uh, Environmental Modeling Center in uh, National Weather Service of United States. My responsibility is to advise our research and operational entities on which direction our field should go and what developments are needed to improve our understanding and predictions of the Earth system. Uh, so I will, in my talk, briefly discuss why we need an Earth system approach and why uh, we need to do a collaborative model development for advancing our prediction capabilities. And I'll also uh, focus a little bit on tropical cyclone forecasts because that's one area that still is a challenge for our, our meteorologists and forecasters. So I'll emphasize my talk from the point of view of how oceans play a role in modulating the atmospheric phenomena. So I'll, I'll give you um, a pictorial way of uh, what consists of our Earth system. This is, this is where we live in, right? This is the land that we live in, but influenced by oceans, atmosphere, terrestrial, like the solar, uh, so solar radiation that drives the energy cycle. You have the human contributions, and we have ecosystems, carbon cycle, vegetation, and within oceans, we have ocean circulation, the biogeochemistry, the marine debris that uh, the minister has uh, mentioned. And as you all now appreciate, oceans respect no boundaries, and that's a very powerful statement that neither does, does the marine debris. But how do you manage the importance of the oceans and how do you know what's happening 
within the oceans and how that is influencing our uh, ability to manage the economy and the lot of livelihoods that depend on the coastal uh, either for tourism or transportation or uh, the important uh, phenomena like tropical cyclones how they are impacted by these oceans all these are important but do we have enough knowledge and observations to take to take into account all the processes that that are that are shown here uh, the science is advanced but not enough to say with confidence that we know everything happening here and how they are interacting with each other at the same time and that's why we need uh, a more focused effort and uh, to, to collectively uh, represent the interests of these processes in our modeling systems for predictions and projections. So what we do uh, to address this problem is to develop a new paradigm. We wanted to bring in people to work with us in a unified community-based modeling framework and we call it unified forecast system. It's not a single model, it is not a single push button and you get your answer. It is a collection of science and knowledge and tools that put together give us an opportunity to address the most challenging problems in the forecasting community. So what we are trying to do is, uh, is uh, uh, it's like open development. Everything is transparent. We love to share our advancements to the research community as they are make, as they are being made not uh, after years like what other people do so we selected a few tools like the atmospheric models the ocean model i'll talk a little bit more in my talk about the mom 6 we have the data assimilation which is an important component of uh, modeling systems and we work with our university partners through ncar and we do public releases of our modeling systems so that people can download those codes and experiment them uh, in, for their own research, like the, uh, the Kaohsiung in University of Science and Technology. If you are interested, you just go to the model system uh, uh, in our website and just download it and run it, and you, you know what the problems are we are facing and try to solve them. Come back to us with solutions, and we will collectively benefit from. Uh, it's a simple paradigm, okay? We give and take, mutual respect, and mutual benefit. That's how we wanted to, and not everybody is equally capable, so we wanted to provide some support system, and that's called the Earth Prediction Innovation Center. What they do is, if you don't have computing, if you don't have knowledge on how to use our models, they'll provide the training, they'll provide the tools to enable research that uh, allows us to collectively grow, but the condition is you have to use the unified forecast system, which is uh, going to be our system and there is a big community that's happening. There are so many um, activities that are happening that are uh, driven in this community-based uh, uh, framework. So the community is here. Kaohsiung University is here, actually. CWB is here. The Taiwan is here. So are other collaborators for US, like our Department of Defense, Navy, uh, EPA. Everybody is in the community. We are here. I represent EMC, the Environmental Modeling Center. So my responsibility is whatever that's happening in this entire community, go through this funnel. This is the research transitioning to operations. So you are coming with your ideas. I test them. I have stages and gates. I decide what passes from one stage to another stage based on the merit of the research, not by just the name of the professor. It is uh, the actual work that, that reflects in improving our existing capabilities, and that's going down, and I put it into operations, and that is real-time benefiting everybody in the world. So that's how this whole system is uh, uh, designed. You know, this is only a small piece here that makes anything into operations, but the amount of work that is needed to make that happen seamlessly is, is, is a challenge, and that's what we are trying to address as, um, as we speak. So, the UFS, in a, in a pictorial way, again, is a collection of tools. What you are seeing here is, like the atmospheric model is here, the ocean models are here, the wave models, the land model, chemistry, air quality, hydrology, 
surge, CIs, you have the data assimilation, you have the physics, all these are coexisting and the software engineering allows us to connect all these uh, tools in a, in, a, in a seamless manner. And the beauty of this is, if you are interested only in, let us say, the wave models, you don't need to worry about the rest of the stuff. You still can contribute to this particular box and it still improves the entire system. So we are developing the system as a modular, manageable system that maintains the dependencies between the applications and products without breaking all these connections. So that, that's how the unified forecast system works. And you can define your applications now if you want to predict weather, say on a medium range like two weeks, you can define your medium range weather prediction system called GFS or ensemble system or seasonal forecast or a hurricane model or a short range model, coastal application. You can just derive anything that you want from this tool without reinventing the wheel. And share the knowledge. You are working on the coastal, that can definitely improve this uh, global model. You want to improve your space weather, that influences your terrestrial weather. You improve the land model, that improves your climate predictions and the hydrology predictions. So there are so many advantages of connecting all these pieces and working in an ecosystem that helps each other develop uh, together and share our knowledge. So I wanted to give uh, kudos to Taiwan. The Central Weather Bureau has embraced this unified forecast system from the beginning. And US, uh, beyond US, the first operational center outside of US to adopt UFS for operations here. So I see a great, tremendous opportunity for all researchers in Taiwan to support CWB, not US. Forget about USA, forget about NOAA. Your own Central Weather Bureau depends on your contributions to the UFS. And what I get from it, I take the benefit from the advancements that you bring in and improve my models in, in the United States. It's a win-win situation, right? We have been collaborating with CWB for the last two decades. We are mostly focused on providing the technology for data assimilation. Now it's replacing the entire modeling system using the same model that we are running in operations in the United States. That's a beauty of uh, collaboration. No boundaries between countries. Weather has no boundaries. Ocean has no boundaries. We are all connected in the same research arena. All right. So as I promised, I'll talk a little bit more about oceans. Uh, we wanted to introduce the concept of ocean modeling and data simulation. This is the MOM6, the modular ocean model. It's running on a tripolar grid, 75 vertical levels. It has a ocean model number four from Geophysical Fluid Dynamics Laboratory in uh, NOAA uh, in the United States that developed this model. And we have other components, like I mentioned, atmosphere, waves, ice. All these are connected together. Uh, the MOM6 ocean model is also a community ocean model. It has a big community developing this. Uh, uh, this has a, a secret uh, finite volume dynamical core, hydrostatic equations. Uh, it has uh, very conservative principles, including the wetting and drying from the ice sheets. And it can support multiple vertical coordinates, depending on your need. You can go with, uh, with the sigma coordinates, or pressure coordinates, or density coordinates are height coordinates. So there are, depending on your research interest, you can, you can apply any of these without uh, worrying about how to redesign that. There are a lot of physical process parameterizations that are available. Um, many capabilities are resulting from extensive collaborations again, jointly developed with NCAR, NOAA, universities, and it is also embedded uh, uh, with a CIS model that is an essential component for our, our uh, climate predictions. So uh, a few examples of uh, important MOM6 applications. There are idealized process studies. You can, double, you can just look at how oceans in an idealized way respond to forcing. You have uh, the coupled climate models, the uh, NCAR community earth system model, Australian model, ice, ice interactions, regional configurations. That's an important uh, work that we are doing with, uh, again, the Marine Center in CWB, developing regional ocean models at a very high resolution to support your coastal applications. And uh, at NOAA, we are developing the fully coupled system for our future applications. So all these are 
a collective result of using the community modeling based approach. And you can see a simple example of how the model can be designed. Uh, this is a one degree ocean model and this is a quarter degree. And you can see this, the features of, uh, this is the Gulf Stream here. Uh, not so much in the one degree, but as you increase the resolution, you will see more features resolved. And that's how you take advantage of uh, this modeling framework that helps us to address some of the key features that are responsible for influencing the weather and climate predictions. So there are so many applications that we are working on. I'm uh, going to focus a little bit on this entire six-way coupled system. The FE3 is the atmospheric model, MOM6 ocean, ice, waves, land, and aerosols. I also uh, want to focus a little bit on uh, our new model, hurricane analysis and forecast system, which is coupled to another model called HICOM, which eventually will be moving into MOM6 so that we all benefit from the same uh, uh, modeling system. So when you look at the six-way coupled system and want to predict the global weather, this is a five-day forecast from a six-way coupled system running at a three-kilometer resolution for the entire globe. And uh, I don't want to give you a false promise. This is not an operational system. This is just a research ability, a demonstration of research capability. Why? To make a five-day prediction Using this model at three kilometers, it takes about 10 hours, 10 hours of clock time, wall clock time. What is an operational requirement? 40 minutes. So 600 minutes to produce a five-day forecast versus 40 minutes that the people want us to provide the five-day forecast. You need 100 times more computing to be able to run this model in operations. Maybe that's one area where we wanted to collectively improve our ability, you know, put our, all the HPC together from whether CWB or Taiwan or US, put all the HPC together and run the system in, in a real time, you know, we'll solve many of the problems. We don't need to develop different applications, different uh, modeling systems. But that's a pipe dream, it is still a long way to go. But I wanted to show this as an opportunity to test and evaluate the importance of resolution and the importance of the Earth system approach, even for short-range weather predictions. Uh, just for uh, uh, exciting you guys on how the results from these coupled systems, the P8, the, the UFS V8 is our latest prototype system. Uh, this is the MJO simulation. For those who know, the Maiden Julian oscillation is a key mode of variability that influences your monsoon, Mayu front, tropical cyclones, all that's happening in the tropical Pacific are determined by this MJO, like El Nino and Southern Oscillation. MJO is an important uh, mode of variability. And we improved our forecast skill by about 21 days, from 15 days to 21 days. Just by using an Earth system model, the model now can give you a useful prediction out to 21 days, three weeks, instead of just two weeks with atmosphere-only model. So that's the power of connecting all these Earth system models together. And we're also looking into different, and so dynamics, uh, you know, the previously, the, 21st century, the 20th century El Ninos are just focused on the equatorial Pacific, whereas the 21st century El Nino is really changing the way the atmospheric patterns, either due to global warming or due to the changes in the decadal oscillations in the Atlantic. We now have more, uh, northward or poleward shift of the warming that is changing the way El Nino impacts our regional climates. So how do we know what we are doing is right or wrong? Most of these are happening in the Pacific, in, in the oceanic regions. Unless we improve our ability to resolve these processes in the ocean models, we will not be able to predict these uh, large scale changes that influence the climate. All right. So I promise you I'll talk about uh, a little bit on the tropical cyclones. This is one example of uh, Hurricane Laura. And what I'm showing you is a, a, a model that runs at a two kilometer resolution. But if you look at the underneath the blue colors here, that is the cold wake. As the typhoon passes through the ocean, it leaves a signal of cold wake. That means the uh, ocean temperatures cool down by upwelling of the cold water, that impacts the intensity of the tropical cyclones. It's a, 
a classical example of ARC interactions that are modulating the typhoon intensity. And we made significant progress in tropical cyclone predictions in the last uh, several decades. And uh, this is a, a sh a how to demonstrate how much improvement that we made. This is the Western Pacific Basin. For instance, we got about 5 to 10 percent improvement just by going for a fully coupled system. When you connect the ocean model to the atmospheric model. We also have significant improvement in the intensity forecast. Same thing for the southern hemisphere, same thing for the North Indian Ocean. So we are making good progress. Well, for those who are weather geeks and following what's happening, this is the storm that, was, that is just happening. Uh, we had a powerful typhoon, Mawar, uh, making landfall in Guam and coming towards our region. Now, it is 10 days away. Okay? This red line is the GFS. That's what CWB is running up in operations. And of course, NSEP also runs it. Now, the Taiwan is here. Can you sleep peacefully knowing that a typhoon is coming in your way? But, hey guys, don't worry, it will recurve. How much confidence you have in these forecasts? You know, if you have to ask me this question, I'll ask you, don't worry about it. This is not going to come in your way. I, it, a few years ago, I cannot say that with the same confidence. We don't know five days or six days ahead of time whether it's going to come this way or go to Philippines or recurve and hit Japan or Korea. No way. But now with this confidence, these are the ensembles, a different model simulations that are showing the same storm and you want to change anything, the physics, the initialization, a lot of uncertainty representation. All these are showing that the model, uh, all these models are suggesting that the tracks will recur and will not impact our beautiful island here. So the science has advanced uh, a lot. Uh, if you want to evacuate people based on the uncertainty, it costs economy, right? It's a, a false alarm also costs your economy. It, it takes unnecessary uh, time away from productivity and impacts the people's lives in a, in a different way. And the opposite is true. When it's making landfall, obviously you need to care for saving the real lives and property. So in either situations, our emergency managers are now more resourced in preparing for evacuations or not evacuation and in any part of the countries where, in the world uh, where the tropical cyclones are a threat. So intensity forecasts. You see this one. This, this little guy, Mawar, moved from 120 knot winds to 140 in less than 12 hours. Rapid intensification. The ocean is so warm, it provides unlimited energy for the tropical cyclone to shoot up its intensity. Look at the global models. These are, these are run at a very coarse resolution, like 15 kilometers. And this is running at 2 kilometer resolution. These are real time again. No, they are not. They are verified only up to 12 hours. But you can see the forecasts are very close to the observed trend for these new models, which are coupled to oceans. When you have the oceans represented adequately, you can get the intensification accurately as well. That means you know exactly how the storms are going to react. And as I suggested uh, earlier, the cold wake has a significant influence on how the tropical cyclones intensify or weaken. So we are taking good care of uh, uh, using our ocean information in predicting the tropical cyclones. We have new observations coming in. These are coming from sail drones. The sail drones measure the subsurface and surface characteristics of the ocean. And our models are trying to take advantage of those observations to improve the physics, to improve our understanding and improve our predictions. So we need more data. We need more ways to assimilate those data sets in our operational models, our research models. So we created another infrastructure called Joint Effort for Data Assimilation Integration. You know, uh, in the Science and Technology Cooperation Dialogue earlier this week, uh, uh, our uh, Administrator from NOAA and Ocean Affairs Council, they met, and the important topic that they discussed was increasing our ability to observe tropical oceans in the Pacific region, particularly near Taiwan, which is a very important uh, uh, 
requirement for us to better understand and better uh, assimilate our data sets into our operational systems and also bring a record for climate monitoring, which is a, another important um, aspect of it. So we are working with our partners here in the Marine Center to, to train them on this data assimilation technique called JEDI. Uh, we have uh, a system called the GODAS, the Global Ocean Data Assimilation System, which is uh, already working and we developed a reanalysis for 40 years. And that is going to help uh, focus on the regions of interest where Kuroshio current, for instance, is important. And we need to uh, look into those uh, areas more closely and add more data sets as they become available. So as we move into our future, the priorities are fully coupled Earth system modeling for seamless predictions from weather scales to seasonal climate scales, addressing and reducing the biases, representation of uncertainties, both stochastic and physically based, high resolution ensemble predictions, and coupled data assimilation with multi-decadal reanalysis for the climate monitoring and advanced post-processing methods like the artificial intelligence machine learning to support our uh, uh, products that are value added uh, based on our model. Uh, so a few concluding thoughts, oceans play a major role. And I wanted to repeat what the minister said, ocean respects no boundaries, and so we need to pay attention to them. It's not just your problem for Taiwan, it is the world's problem to make sure our oceans are well observed, well understood, and well predicted. Accurate representation of these processes at all time scales is critical for both weather and climate predictions, particularly for the severe weather. There are significant gaps in our observing systems for our oceans. The satellites cannot see through the clouds. That means you are missing a lot of information. Most of the things happen on the ocean. We live, 20 is, only 20% is land. 70% is ocean. We have to take care of that. Earth system modeling approach, I introduced the unified forecast system concept that allows people to work together in the same framework to benefit both research and operations and creates an opportunity to engage in a more productive partnership. So community modeling and collaborations are critical for accelerated progress in science and RTO. Thank you so much for your attention and we'll be glad to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Dr. Talapkata. Does anyone have any question about the presentation? Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Prada. And so, in the side of presentation, thank you. So, okay, the, <clears throat> the topic of the next keynote speech is the perspective and, and the challenge of Taiwan-United States Maritime Corporation. It's my honor to introduce our speaker, Dr. Ting Hui Lin. Uh, Dr. Ting Hui Lin holds a PhD degree in a political science from National Taiwan University. His expensive academic background set the foundation for his extensive knowledge in the field of international relationship. Dr. Lin has held some notable positions throughout his career. He served as the former vice president of the Prospect Foundation and the vice president of Taiwan Brand Trust. In addition, he had served as the adjunct assistant professor at both Central Police University at the Taiwan Place College. Uh, during his tenure from 2003 to 2008 as an assistant researcher in Taiwan National Society Council, Dr. Lin was on crucial issue in the Pacific Island country, East China Sea and the South China Sea. With his extensive academic achievement, government experience and the notable contribution to research and the policy. We are provided 
people have been here today. Dr. Lim, please. Thanks, everyone, and good morning, everyone. And I think I have to shorten my presentation right now, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you know the time is, uh, we have uh, delayed uh, the schedule. But, uh, I, but I have to share uh, my observation and my feelings about uh, the ocean issues with you because the, uh, I think this topic is very important for us because uh, you know, even we discuss about the Taiwan and Americans cooperation, but how to cooperate, how to cooperate, and how to do some ocean organization uh, governance. Uh, so uh, I choose this topic because I think um, uh, even you discuss about the maritime scientific research or uh, uh, rescues or any kind of law enforcement, I think the maritime security is the most important issues. If you don't have a security environment, you cannot do anything, okay? So why? Because I share with you. Uh, why we have to cooperate? I, I think the two reasons is the, because the Taiwan Strait is the biggest, uh, the busiest strait in the world. Uh, based on the Bloomberg, and he said, the Taiwan Strait has the largest container ships over 88% in the world. So it's the very busiest here. And you can see this. Uh, we have the territorial sea, we have the contingent zone, and we have the EEZ overlap with the China. But China always said that it's the Taiwan Strait may be his internal strait or internal waters. If it, it is internal waters, how about this 88% containers transit to this strait will be affected by China? So that's why we have to cooperate. Why? Taiwan is the, has the big, busiest strait here, and uh, Americans is the most powerful maritime countries in the world. So Americans, yes, have the obligations to maintain or to protect any freedom of navigation, of, of right of the any area of the oceans. So you can see it's very important. And the second is that you can see the last year when speakers, Pelosi, visit Taiwan, and uh, this is the military drill, military exercise here, and the five missiles fell into the Japanese and Taiwanese overlapping easy. So the question is, uh, based on the UN Charter and the 1982 Uncross, one country can straight or use force to the other country to deal with disputes. The second question is based on 1982 Uncross. One country can draw the prohibition zone or own zone in other countries' territorial sea or contingent zone. The third is that one country can set up a prohibition zone or own zone in other states easy for military activities to interfere free navigation and overflight? Yes, I think the answer is no. You cannot prohibit or you cannot uh, stop any, any other country's maritime activities in, the, in this area. But the China do that. It do that. It do that for what? For threaten Taiwan. For threaten America. For threaten um, all over the world. This is uh, this year, and President Tsai Ing will visit America and transit uh, California, and visit the speakers McCarthy. The same situation happened, Shandong Hao, and then you can see the many many warship patrolled near the Taiwan Strait and uh, the Western Pacific Oceans. So he created the uh, uh, not security or not safe environment here near Taiwan. So how to do scientific research? How to do the maritime rescue? How to do the exploit natural resources here? Okay, he prohibit here, he, he patrol here to 
interrupt you. And the second is uh, where we can cooperate. I think this is case is very important. Uh, even we have some argument in the domestic issues, but I think this is a good example. Seven phone number uh, 128 uh, lost contact in the area near the Palau. So the Palau government helped Taiwan government and the Taiwan's representative office in the United States and the Taiwan Coast Guard request the assistance of the United States Coast Guard to track down the ship. And the Palau also gives some assistance. And the Philippines sent a fixed wing aircraft to the area. And the Indonesia, because some Indonesian workers are on the boat, Maritime Security Agency also joined the research. And then the United States units based in Guam sent aircraft to the region. So this is a good example for every country to cooperate to rescue in the Western Pacific Oceans. And this is the Americans uh, jurisdictions area, uh, uh, include the EEZ, and uh, this is the Taiwanese uh, EEZ. So, also outside, beyond the national jurisdiction, and uh, in our national jurisdictions area, okay, we can find some ways to cooperate. And how? This is uh, our representative, our ambassadors, Xiao in uh, making Xiao in, in America. And uh, he signed the Coast Guard Agreement, and uh, we called it the MOU, MOU, and about to establish the Coast Guard Working Group in 2021. The relationship uh, to cooperate, uh, we, because we have the common objects of preserving maritime resources, reducing illegal, unreported, and unregulated fishing, IUU and participating in joint maritime search and the rescue and the environmental response events. Then we have a work, working group, but not very, the frequently, I think it should be strengthened because uh, this is the first time, but uh, then uh, we uh, uh, want to provide the uh, public good to the uh, global community. So the purpose of the Coast Guard Corporation, because we want to provide the public good to the global community and provide, uh, provide public goods means to provide and create a maritime security environment or space and set up a suitable mechanism to share information, exchange experience, and law enforcement to against, or against the transboundary crime, maritime pollution together and to advance ocean research and protect natural resources and the environment. Then you can see uh, this is based on the Professor Berger's uh, articles and he said the maritime security is the core interest or the core appearance in all of the maritime or ocean issues. And then you can see the blue economy, maritime, marine safety, sea power, resilience and then economic development, maritime environment, national security and the human security, all of the uh, circle around the maritime security. So if you have the maritime security, you can you do anything. Uh, the current development is the ITROS. ITROS will accept uh, uh, advisory's opinions uh, from the small islands uh, union and uh, it requests for the advisory opinions Submitted by the Commission of the Small Islands on Climate Change and International Law. He asked the ITROS that what is the state specific obligation to the uh, UNCLOS and uh, for uh, climate change. Then the same ICJ, ICJ is the, also have the case, uh, advisory case, and this year is in March, and he also asked the ICJ what's the obligations of the states to about the uh, climate change and, uh, and uh, climate change and the state applications, especially the maritime pollutions. Okay, so you can see the development is the, uh, the same, the climate change and the maritime security and the, 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 the maritime uh, uh, governance. Uh, the current event is here. You can see the 
uh, Philippines Coast Guard and the Chinese Coast Guard. And they, they have a uh, dispute uh, near the Second Thomas Shore. And uh, you can see uh, the Secretary Austin said, I think this, this statement is the repeat by the uh, former Secretary Pompeo and the, former sec and the current Secretary Blinken. And Austin also said that the mutual defense between the uh, Americans and the Philippines applies to armed attacks on either country's defense assets to include vessels and aircraft anywhere in the Western Philippine Sea. Western Philippine Sea is means the South China Sea. And uh, very short, sorry, very short, uh, video, okay, not operate. Okay, here. Yeah. Sorry, it's the advertisement. You can see, on that day, the situation is very dangerous. Eh? Sorry, no video over there. Okay, I have the video, and uh, but uh, just the show here, not the show on the on the screens. Uh, so I. Okay, thank you. Okay, so next is the, you can see the Chinese Coast Guard is not just the police, it's the military unit. Because he transferred his uh, command assistance from the, uh, state, uh, from the State Department to the uh, military commissions. Okay, so it belongs to the People's Armed Police. And uh, in 2021, and the uh, Chinese uh, passed the and Chinese government passed the China Coast Guard law. Uh, it's why the Japanese government said it's a war law, uh, because uh, it will have some have something to do. Just like the Second Thomas Shore, uh, the Philippines have the uh, worship uh, over the reef, and the the Chinese government they prepare to toy the worship over the second time of the show. So based on the, their domestic law, based on the 2021 20, 20, and the Chinese Coast Guard law. So very dangerous here. So Taiwan and Americans can cooperate on the, uh, and help the Taiwan to participate in the global uh, issues, uh, especially about the oceans issues and a meaningful contribution to issues of global concern and protect maritime security and safety and building networks to facilitate maritime law enforcement, information change and international cooperation. And I, my conclusion is we still have some challenges because the first is we have to, we have working group now, but not high frequent meetings. So we can, uh, find some ways to improve these situations. The second challenge is the priority is maritime security for freedom of navigation near Taiwan uh, versus Taiwan and Japan. Taiwan and the Philippines also can uh, cooperate. The third uh, challenge is the Coast Guard training and the education. Uh, Taiwan and Americans are different, especially the boarding and the inspections. Uh, so how to consider that? in the future. The, six, the fourth challenge is uh, some political pressures influence every, everything, so just like the Chinese in the international society uh, have uh, some uh, political pressures to Taiwan. Uh, this is slogan is in the American Coast Guard's headquarters office. <laughs> I just the photo there and uh, uh, he said, Advanced foreign policy, national security, and uh, enhance United States Coast Guard operations through meaningful international engagements, partnerships, and security cooperation to promote global maritime governance. So, uh, Americans and the Taiwan's Coast Guard uh, in the future have the good cooperations and they can maintain the good governance in the world. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Dr. Lin. So, insightful <coughs> presentation.
uh, please give me in long of applause to the speaker for the insightful presentation. Thank you. Starboard side natin, uh, they kept their distance, siguro mga around 1,000 yards, no? minimonitor yung movement natin. Mag-a-attempt sana ako, no? Uh, Thank you very much for listening to the two experts who are very high level of knowledge, so you need to reduce your time. So now we're going to take a break for 10 minutes. Okay, after speakers sharing value with information, I'd like to show you some time to digest. After speakers sharing value with information, I believe you need some time to digest. So we are now taking 10 minutes break. 我们现场准备了茶饮、咖啡，还有点心，哈，请大家可以享用。